uh, a few days ago, I was in the center of my town. It uh, in this video, it looks very, very, you know, like dull and gray and very, I would say, even creepy. I saw a video this morning. My friend was in her village, and the air raid siren went off, and she recorded it. And I and I'm listening to it, and I'm going, oh my god. I mean, imagine this happening five times a day, you know, and acclimating to like, this, this is your life. A year ago, you had a normal life. Now you don't. Uh, my name is uh, Andrew Lenik. Um, I always say it in Ukrainian as well, Andriy Lenet. And I wear a lot of hats, I guess, but there's one big hat that I wear, which is an advocate for Ukraine. This Friday will mark one year of the invasion. Uh, the tanks rolled across the Ukrainian border on February 24th, 2022. And the significance is, uh, it's huge in so many different ways. Um, in the beginning of this war, there was a general belief that Ukraine would last three days, four days. Uh, I think that's what kept the West out of it. Um, and instead, the Ukraine has shown a resolve that is inspiring the rest of the world. And I have a video back home of the first panel. My niche, in a sense, is, uh, is the smaller projects, um, the more personalized projects, keeping that contact going and trying to find needs. I've got this sort of vision that there are lots of people who could take on small projects. There's a, an instructor, a, a lecturer, and a couple of his students, and um, they saw, they, they were studying solar energy, and solar panels have a guarantee and a shelf life, or rather a useful life of about 20 years, let's say. And so when they were being replaced, when they were down to you know, 80, 70, 60% of the output that they originally had and, and they really couldn't handle the load of a house, they were replaced and they were destined for the landfill. And my friend and colleague and, and a few of the students said, well, wait a minute, we can st what can we still utilize these for? And came up with this idea of uh, converting them to be USB chargers, standalone USB chargers. So now a solar panel that is even producing at 60% of its output can charge four USB devices. Typically these are, um, these are cell phones because Ukraine uh, has a actually very good cell coverage and also it's satellite-based cell phones. This is, it's a photowatt seven. I had been working for more than three years on reuse of solar photovoltaics for social and ecological benefit uh, through the Equitable Solar Solutions nonprofit. The cost of the modules are very, uh, very low because they were donated to us, to our nonprofit, and we're not charging anything. It's all uh, like my gas mileage to go pick them up in Gunnison and bring them here. I'm not charging for any of that. It's just to help the people in Ukraine but it does cost about $100 per module to get it air freighted over to Poland and then put on a truck into Lviv. This past Saturday, we were actually able to film an instructional video, a 10 minute instructional video. Um, much to my surprise, even though I have no skills in that regard, everybody was saying, oh, this is pretty easy. You just unscrew this and cut this wire and, you know, and, and I was like, okay, I'll let you do that and I'll make sure that, that they get to the people in Ukraine that they're intended to get to. Yeah, I can feel, I think it's tightening. It's just tremendously important for them to understand that we need to help other people and we need to think about what's going on in the world really broadly. And the, the war against Ukraine is very personally important to me. Um, and I want to show them that we just, we do whatever we can to help people. When the electricity goes out, internet goes out immediately, cell phones still work. This is the way people stay in touch, you know, and people use their cell phones, use the internet on their cell phones, use the voice over internet protocol uh, messaging apps like Viber and things like that. So I want people to realize that we're living this privileged life here. You know, I, I mean, yes, there's poverty, but for most of us, we have food in our refrigerator. We don't go to bed hungry. We have a roof over our heads. We have electricity. 
you know, I mean, I laugh. Uh, my internet went out for 10 minutes uh, last week, and I and I normally I would have said, "Darn it," or something more colorful. Um, and instead, I I'm just like, "Dude, chill out, chill out," you know. And and so from from that perspective, and and how privileged we are, that should awaken within us the humanitarianism that should exist in every every person. So I feel like I have a duty to to help show uh, students, you know, young adults and and older adults too, that it is still possible to make a change in this world, even across the world. It may not be a huge change, but it's one step, and you can make a difference uh, for for somebody clear across the planet.